What's up, poker players? Hope you guys are out there crushing it on the tables. Six plus poker. What is it? How can we adapt our game? Are there a lot of people playing it? Is it more profitable than Hold'em or other variations? How should we change our strategy or poker theory to adapt? And then maybe jump into some hands, but let's first develop a strategy and theory right now. Fire up America's Card Room. This is where I do a lot of my online poker play one of the few sites available to US players. And you can see right here is the six plus Hold'em with a big old new sign trying to advertise it. I've got my filters off and there are shorthanded games going right now. There's probably about 20 of them. Looks like the highest stakes going currently is 50 cent dollar in a $30 capped. Capped tables are so ridiculous. I don't think I'm gonna do that. So we'll probably wind up playing 25.50 unless a 50 cent dollar game gets going here that isn't capped. First, let's go over the rules and the hand strength changes. I will leave the link to America's Card Room down in the video description. So if you guys want to check it out, and if we go to the promotions, 6 plus Hold'em, they have a video here. Check the video out if you want to, guys. Not a ton of info there, just a brief overview of the game. So here is the new hand ranking. High card pair, two pair, and then straight, then three of a kind, and then full house and flush. So flush and full house are now swapped as well. So a flush is now less likely than a full house. They include a starting hand chart here, and you can see 7-6 offsuit would now be the worst starting hand, and of course, pocket aces is still the best starting hand. One thing I'm noticing right away is how close the hands are in relative strength, and that suited connectors, middle to high, are now more valuable. You can see right here, a jack-10 suited is better than a king-10 suited. You wouldn't think that would make sense, but it does because you're gonna wind up flopping much more straight draws and hitting more straights in general. So I would definitely suggest checking this out. They also say here how the equities are much closer and hand splits are gonna happen slightly more often, which we would assume as well. All right, so we're going to be removing 16 cards out of the deck. That leaves 36 cards left. We will remove our two dealt cards, which will give us our remaining outs. And if we do 100 divided by 34 remaining outs, we are close to now 3% per out. On the flop, if we remove the three flop cards, there are now 31 cards remaining in the deck, which gives us a 3.23% chance of hitting our remaining outs on the turn. And if we divide 30, our remaining outs on the river gives us a 3.3 repeating chance to hit our outs on the river. So instead of like Texas Hold'em, where our approximate outs are gonna be 2% per out, in short deck, we're going to be playing close to 3% per out, with an increasing likelihood as the deck gets shorter on the flop, turn, and river. All right, we're gonna fire up Flopzilla, remove all of the five through deuces, and if we bring our preflop range to 100%, that gives us 630 preflop combos in Texas Hold'em, and we're going to be removing all of these cards, which leaves us these left in our range. So if we're using a 100% preflop range, here are our hand distributions. You can see how much less likely a flush is than a full house. It's actually closer to quads than it would be to a full house. Straight is here, three of a kind. Two pair is actually exactly the same as three of a kind. You wouldn't think that, that's surprising. You can see how the straight draws are far more likely now. All right, let's start removing some hands in our preflop range. So if we start playing a seven off through a six off, something like this, this is around 50%. We can remove queen eight suited, king seven suited, king eight and nine eight, and we are now below 50%. Take out some more of the offsuit ones here. Here's a 40% preflop range. Here is what a 33.3% of preflop range would look like. May remove some of the offsuit there. 
and we're now close to 25%. This is what a 20% range would look like. You probably wanna throw in the Jack-10 suited too, maybe Queen-10 or King-10 suited, maybe even take out the Ace-Jack. With the Ace-Jack, we're at 20.6 without 18.7. And I think we should put in some more suited connectors here. There is exactly 20% right there. And you can see over here the likelihood of our absolute hands. We will be flopping a ton of straight draws. I wanna take a look at just the suited connectors and just see what they look like. Yeah, look at how many straight draws there are going to be. And not that many flush draws. We're also going to be hitting our straights more often and hitting our flushes less often. All right, we're gonna take Jack 10 suited and look at how high these straight draw possibilities are and how much different the flush is going to be than a straight for our absolute value here. And let's look at why we would hit a flush less often. So let's say we have Jack 10 of hearts. Flop comes out queen, seven, hearts, nine of clubs. Our remaining heart draws would be the nine, the eight, the six, the king, and the ace. That is five cards out of the deck. If we take out our two starting cards and the flop, that leaves us 31 remaining cards in the deck for the turn. If we do five divided by 31, that'll give us our percentage, 16%, that we hit the flush on the turn. Let's say it comes out six of diamonds we miss. There are now 30 cards left in the deck, we do five divided by 30, it is 16.6 .6 repeating chance of hitting it on the river, slightly more likely, since there is one card removed. And if you take both streets, the turn and the river combined, our chances of hitting a flush are now less than one in three, less than 33%, where it would be closer to 50% when playing Texas Hold'em. All right, so what have we learned? We have learned that our equities run much closer together, each out is now more valuable, moving from 2 to over 3% in short deck, 6 plus. Middle suited connectors and suited connectors in general become much more valuable. Hitting flush draws because hitting flush draws becomes much less likely because of the card removal of four of our draw cards. Hitting straights become more likely because of the removal of the same cards and improving our hands just in general post flop are going to be much more likely besides the flush draws so i'm going to write down that hand strength chart i'm gonna have it in front of me just so i can look back on it i don't know how 20 years of playing texas hold'em is going to affect how i think at the table I'm sure it will. It's going to take a little bit to get used to. So I kind of want to have that crutch in front of me so I can look down and cement it within my brain and mentality at the table. I'm going to start off by just playing one table at a time. And I am going to have Flopzilla up next to my table just in case I need to look back on that as well. I'm going to try to play it without it and just talk through the hands. I think that's probably the best way to learn and adapt to this new game. And hopefully our theory and strategy going into the game gives us a leg up. A lot of it's going to come with experience, but I do think these games are going to be very soft at first until people understand the nuances of those card removal and how it changes outs, draws, and equities. I'm sure there's a ton of players out there working on this, and I'm sure there are a bunch of players who are taking advantage of doing some studying like this off the table, bring it to the table and having a much further gap between the knowledge of the poor players and of themselves, which should improve win rates. I'm not sure how hold a manager will adapt. That should be interesting as well. I'm not even sure if hold a manager will even work on these six plus tables, but these are all things we're going to find out. And in the next video, I will be doing my play. I'm going to analyze it. I'm just gonna record the entire session and probably pick out some of the more interesting hands. So make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on that. Give this video a thumbs up. And if I missed or said anything wrong, which is very likely, since I have no knowledge of this game before today, let me know what 
what I missed, if my theory was off, or anything I could add to it down in the comment section below. The link to America's Card Room, the 6 Plus promotions is down there. If you guys watch this video soon, head out to those 6 Plus tables. You'll probably see me grinding it out on there. And of course, I will be back soon with a new video. But until then, come find me out on the virtual felt. Be free.